Welcome to Around the Weird. Here's your host, the museum curator of the strange and unusual, Mr. Nothing. Thank you, Mysterious Voice, and welcome back to Around the Weird, a booktube channel where I talk about all the unusual and out-of-the-ordinary literature that I have found in my travels. Today, it is Poetry Thursday, so I wanted to talk about some poetry that has been of interest, uh, and I have a bit of a, of a strange one for you today. Uh, today's poem is all about uh, sort of condemnation or a critique of uh, American life in the early 1900s. I am referring to To Elsie uh, by William Carlos Williams. For those who don't know, William Carlos Williams uh, was an American poet, a Puerto Rican American poet, uh, who lived between the late 1800s and the mid 1900s. Uh, he frequent he, he primarily wrote poetry. Uh, which um, he was part of the Imagist movement, uh, wrote a lot about America and, and nature and things like that. Uh, he also wrote uh, prose, uh, prose fiction um, books, um, stuff like that. I'd be interested in checking that out uh, just to get a bigger feel for William Carlos Williams because his poetry has, uh, has caught my eye. Uh, especially this this poem, which was actually referenced uh, in in a poem that I talked about last week at the time that I uh, that I had made this. Uh, so you know, go look into that on the Poetry Thursday uh, playlist. Uh, and a lot of people um, regard uh, William Carlos Williams very highly, uh, considered um, a big deal in his in his field. Uh, I you might actually be familiar with one of his uh, poems because it's been sort of memed to death. Uh, it's, um, uh, the, it's the poem about the plums, uh, forgive me, I've eaten the plums that you were saving or something like that. They were so cold and so sweet or something like that. So, uh, a very familiar poem that's just written as like a note on a fridge, uh, which, which I rather like. Uh, and, um, he's, he has other notable poems too that many might, people might not have heard about or they might have. Uh, but that's the beside the point. We're going to focus on 2LC today. I will read it and do a little bit of analysis, and we will move on from there. 2LC. The pure products of America go crazy. Mountain folk from Kentucky or the ribbed north end of Jersey, with its isolate lakes and valleys, its deaf mutes, thieves, old names, and promiscuity between devil-may-care men who have taken to railroading out of sheer lust of adventure, and young slatherns, bathed in filth from Monday to Saturday, to be tricked out that night with gouds from imaginations, which have no peasant traditions to give them character, but flutter and flaunt sheer rags, succumbing without emotion saved numbed terror." under some hedge of choke cherry or viburnum, which they cannot express, unless it be that marriage, perhaps with a dash of Indian blood, will throw up a girl so desolate, so hemmed round with disease or murder, that she'll be rescued by an agent, reared by the state, and sent out at fifteen to work in some hard-pressed house in the suburbs. Some doctor's family, some Elsie, voluptuous water expressing with broken brain the truth about us, her great ungainly hips and flopping breasts addressed to cheap jewelry and rich young men with fine eyes, as if the earth under our feet were an excrement of some sky, and we degraded prisoners destined to hunger until we eat filth. While the imagination strains at their deer going by fields of goldenrod in the stifling heat of September, Somehow, it seems to destroy us. It is only an isolate flex that something is given off. No one to witness and adjust. No one to drive the car. And so that was uh, to Elsie. In terms of analysis, there is a fair bit to talk about uh, with this poem. Uh, I think uh, it's talking about uh, a certain region of America. He specifically says uh, mountain folk from Kentucky or the ribbed north end of Jersey with its isolate lakes and valleys. Uh, talking about that specific region with those specific people, uh, you, you have devil-may-care men who have taken to railroading out of sheer lust of adventure, which I think might be middle class or upper, upper class at the, at the time type of people. And then also talking about young slatterns 
bathed in filth from Monday to Saturday, to be tricked out that night with gouds from imaginations which have no peasant traditions, to give them character but flutter and flaunt sheer rags. And I think um, maybe low-class women who are brought up to a, a higher class, uh, because as they say later, uh, or as the narrator says, unless it be that marriage, perhaps with a dash of Indian blood, will throw up a girl so desolate, so hemmed round with disease or murder, that she'll be rescued by an agent reared by the state and sent out at 15 to work in some hard-pressed house in the suburbs, some doctor's family, some Elsie. And I, I have a really hard time understanding that part. Uh, is is the Elsie in this in this poem just a maid of some sort? Uh, I know that um, William Carlos William, he, his family had a maid. Uh, is he is was he kind of describing uh, how that Elsie was brought up and how that Elsie was neglected by by the family, but by own, their own family, just churning out uh, Elsies left and right and in upper class society just to produce them for being a maid because they really didn't have anything else. And it says, voluptuous water expressing with broken brain the truth about us. So it's a critique of, of, this, of this type of lifestyle. Her great ungainly hips and flopping breasts addressed to cheap jewelry and rich young men with fine eyes, as if the earth under our feet were an excrement of some sky. Which is a very fascinating part. I think this this poem is ultimately a critique of this lifestyle of, of of churning out these types of women, of maybe the inequalities that exist in America at this time, where you have the rich men who can do anything they want and the women who maybe can't do anything they want, um, that are uh, that are kind of left without recourse to either be someone's maid or serve as someone's husband or something like that. Uh, not really not really living for much and not really having an opportunity to do much. It's really, really sad. And um, I, I think William Carlos Williams sees this as sort of a, a reflection of a, of a broken society. Because uh, he says, as if the earth under our feet were an excrement of some sky, uh, and we degraded prisoners destined to hunger until we eat filth. Which is... A very interesting way to describe America at this time. Uh, you know, early 1900s, there was a lot of success going on, uh, a lot of um, a lot of wealth being spread around the upper classes, and you know that might have led people to say, "Oh, America's doing great," but maybe William Carlos Williams is saying, "No, it actually it's it's not doing great." Uh, so that's that's a particularly interesting uh, interesting element of the poem, and it's 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 uh, amplified by the beginning of the poem, which says the pure products of America go crazy. Those who are born in America, at least that's what I think he's saying. Like though they go crazy, America has a tendency to break the people who are who are in it, uh, which certainly isn't subtle. I'll, I'll say for William Carlos Williams, he just kind of tells you. Uh, right there, what he what he's trying to say. But sometimes, you know, maybe it doesn't pay to be subtle, especially when, when you're talking to the people that uh, William Carlos Williams is is saying. Uh, but the end of the poem also strikes me as interesting because he specifically says, "It is only an isolate flex that something is given off. No one to witness and adjust. No one to drive the car. So isolate flex, kind of like here and there, uh, like." People don't often notice things until it's in, in great bunches. So you're not likely to notice these problems until it's too late. It's like no one to witness and adjust, no one to drive the car. No one's fixing this problem. <laughs> we're we're kind of driving uh, without any aid, um, presumably off a cliff or to something even far worse. Um, have we reached that point? Um, according to William Carlos Williams, I don't necessarily think so. I think this problem is still going on, and it's a problem that a century ago he was talking about uh, still hasn't been addressed. And um, sort of sort of noting um, just something that exists for society that, that could be fixed, but maybe indicates, as I've been saying, um, a deeper societal ingrained problem. Anyway, those are my thoughts on To Elsie by Will William Carlos Williams. A pretty solid poem, uh, uh, definitely uh, one that has stood out to me because of the tone and the, the, um, the underlying message that uh, Williams is trying to get across. Uh, but what did you think? Let me know in the comments below. would love to hear from you. I think there are definitely a couple different interpretations that you could apply to this, this sort of poem. Uh, but other than that, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so that more people can find out about this poem or this poet or Poetry Thursday if they didn't already know. Uh, and until uh, then, I wish you the best of luck in your weird and uh, uh, crazy because you're a pure product of America kind of travels. Farewell.